to understand probability distributions, you have to understand that probabilities vary. We have a, a coin and you're tossing it three times, okay? All of the possibilities that can happen is shown to us. Now I ask you this question. So we toss coin three times. And my question is this, what is the chance that if we toss the coin three times, we get zero heads, no heads, okay? Uh, how many different outcomes can happen for the first one? Uh, it can be head or tail. So the first one can land in two different ways. The yeah. second one can land in how many different ways? Again, two. Very good. So when, when the head comes first, it doesn't go away from the domain of possibilities. It is with replacement are you following everyone when you toss the coin or a die if you get a four the first time that four doesn't go away from the domain of possibilities so it's with replacement so in the second one it's two and the third outcome how many different outcomes we can have for this um third coin toss again two two okay so it's basically two to the power of three if you look at the notes from the previous class, you rem remember that when it is with, with replacement, it's n to the power of r, okay? So when we toss the coin three times is um, two to the power of three. So no matter how you count it, the total number of possibilities is eight. We want zero heads. In how many different ways we, we got zero heads? Uh, in one. Which is tail, tail, tail. Okay, yeah. so the chance of zero head is one over eight. What is the chance of one head? What do we do? Um, sorry, can you ask that again? I want the chance that out of those three tosses of the coin, one ends up to be head. What should I do? So the total number of possibilities is eight. How many of those possible outcomes have one head? Three. And that makes us happy. So total number of possibilities are eight. Three of them make us happy. Okay. Uh, what is the probability that we get two head? How do you approach this question? Uh, so total number of possibilities is eight. In how many different situations we will be happy? Three. Three. So very good. Yeah. What is the chance that we will get three heads? Total number of opportunities is eight again. Very good. So, and it's one time. Only one. Yeah. So the chance of three heads is one. So this is, this is a, a simple probability. It's just like a practice for the previous chapter, but notice that um, we realize something that this probability um, varies as well. It's like another variable. Probability of different specific outcomes vary. So it's a variable. And similar to frequency distribution table, we can have a probability distribution table. This is the situation and on the right side, we have the probability which is changes. Uh, and, you know, so we have frequency distribution table, and in this table we have probability distribution table. And uh, also we can actually present this difference in probabilities. Probabilities are not the same, they vary, they are not constant. So we can say probability of zero heads, if it is this much, one head, two head, three head. And we actually see that similar to frequency distribution table that I could ask you, where is the concentration? What is the mode? What is the most probable? And those kind of things. Here is also the same thing. We have a concentration. Um, the probability of one head and two head is more. And the probability of zero head and three head is less. There is a con we also can think about the dispersion around that central tendency. So, when we talk about the probability distribution, similar to frequency distribution, 
the questions of what is the average, what is the standard deviation, these are all valid questions, and you already got how we calculate them. Um, for some specific types of distributions, I will tell you what is the uh, shape of the distribution, and I will ask you to tell me the uh, the mean and the standard deviation. I will tell you what is the mean and what is the standard deviation, but you don't have to calculate it manually. The other thing is that uh, in this kind of probability that I'm asking you, like the experiments like throwing a die or a coin or those kind of things, uh, they, this is not a valid question. I cannot ask you what is the chance that you will get 1.3 heads because it is impossible, okay? So, this kind of distribution that you're talking about, probability distribution, uh, it's a special kind of probability distribution in this chapter, which is discrete probability distribution. Like for a phenomena that you either get two expected outcomes or three expected outcomes. Uh, things between them cannot happen. Therefore, it's called discrete. In the next chapter, chapter six, we will talk about uh, continuous probability distributions. But all of the probability distributions of this chapter are uh, discrete. And there are three of them, binomial, hypergeometric, and Poisson. Those of you who have been French immersion, what is, what is the meaning of Poisson? Fish. Exactly. And this fish is, you know, a lot of good mathematicians have their last name as fish or fisher. So just remember that Poisson was a French mathematician, okay? So these are the three special kind of binomial distribution that when I explain for you, you see that you have seen it in the previous chapter without knowing that these are special, okay? The first one, binomial distribution, happens when the situation is such that uh, there is a special attribute. The attribute is this. Just think about the dice, a die. The chance of getting one is what? One and six. One over six. What is the chance of getting two? One over six. Yeah, so it's always one over six. The chance of any outcome is one over six. Uh, so, but it is not only die that has this kind of situation. Look at this real life example. The chance of getting sick is 10%. What is the probability that two out of five selected students are sick, okay? Now, this is also, <clears throat> although it's not about a geometric shape like die, but it has a fixed probability. Look at this, the chance of every pe person to be sick is 10%. So if I tell you that John was sick, what is the chance that Mary will be sick? It is still 10%, okay? When this kind of situation happens, then a specific kind of answer we will get. And let's discover that. Uh, we want to select five people, right? Uh, what is the chance that the first person is sick? We want two out of five to be sick. What is the chance that the first one is sick? 10%. 10%. And we want the second person to be sick. What is the chance that the second person is sick? Same. Okay. Is that all that we want? 
We want five people. So what do we want next? We want a healthy student, right? Because we want two to be sick. So if we chose two sick, the next one should be healthy. What is the chance of selecting a healthy student next? 90%. Very good. And what do we need next? Is that all or we need more students? We need more, more students. healthy students. Yeah, another healthy. Very good. What is the chance that the next one is healthy? Same thing. 90%. Do we need another student? No. No. So this is the chance of choosing two sick students and three healthy students, right? Because there is a constant probability in this case. So is this the answer to the question? No, because we can choose the first one to be sick, the second one to be healthy, the third one to be sick, healthy, healthy. If this happens also, we will have two out of five sick, right? Yeah, it's the same as the first one. Yeah, so, all of, so this, is a, this is a desirable outcome. This is also a desirable outcome. We have to add all of these ways that we can have uh, two out of five healthy and that those two can be anywhere. Therefore, it turns out that the probability of two out of five being sick is we have to find all of the combinations of two out of five. All the ways that we can choose two out of the five of these sick people will work. And then how many in each one of these writings, we have two sick people. So there would be 0.1 to the power of two, and there would be three healthy people. No matter where they are, the result of calculation would be 0.9 to the power of three. So this is, this is nothing other than what we had here. So this is this, or this, it doesn't matter. And then we have many of them. We have combination of two out of five of them. Uh, all of them are a good answer, no matter where the um, sick people show up, okay? So we can write this as we are selecting our people out of n people, that fixed probability to the number of times that we want that, and one minus that fixed probability to the power of one, n minus r. Now this formula, which is called the binomial formula, may look scary to you, but don't be scared. Let me ask you another question. What is the chance that three out of five are sick? Okay, so let's go here. How many six do we want? Three. 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 So point 0.1 multiplied by point 0.1 multiplied by point 0.1 is the probability of getting three six. How many healthy ones do we want? Two. Two. What is the chance of healthy? Point 0.9 to the power. Exactly. So point 0.9 to the power of two. So that is no matter what. And then all of the shufflings of the place that these sick people show up are acceptable. So you see, if you, you have two options, you either go with that formula or you just simply understand what you're doing. Okay, so let's do another one. You tell me, so we want four out of five to be sick. Okay, so what do we do first? Combination of? Uh, four out of five. Four out of five multiplied by? How many six do we want? Four. four. Probability of sick to the power of sick. And how many healthy do we want? One. Yeah, what is the probability of healthy? 
0.9. Probability of healthy to the number of, to the power of number of healthy. Okay, now let's do another one. What is the chance that five out of five are sick? What should I do? Combination of five out of five to be sick. What is the chance of sick? Point one. How many six do I like? Five. Five. What is the chance of healthy? Point nine. How many healthies do I like? Zero. Okay. So, you know, you either can go with the formula N, N minus R, one minus P, or you simply think of the probability of what you want to the power of how many of them you like. The power is the, the probability of the next one that you like to the power of that you want to make the configuration. Let's do one more time. Probability of zero out of five, six. Ready? What should I do? It's a combination with zero out of the five. Very good. 0 0.1 to the power of, uh, wait, we want. How many, are, 0 0.1 is the sick. How many sick do we want? Zero. 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 Very good. How many healthy do we want? Five. Five. Life is? Great. Easier. Beautiful. Easy. Right? Good. Okay, now, you'll see that there is some situations you're already familiar with, with the examples that we did. Just imagine that we have these people, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay? These are some students. And A, B, and C are female. Female, 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 okay? So these are the female, okay? And I'm going to choose four people for a team, okay? Do we have that fixed probability? What is the chance that the first one is a female? Three out of seven. Three out of seven. Yeah. Three out of seven, very good. Um, I selected the first female for the team. What is the chance that the second one is a female? Two out of, Two out of six. six. Yeah, so is the probability constant? No. No. no, no. So you see, sometimes the probability is constant, sometimes it is not constant. When it was constant, there are four conditions that must be satisfied. One is that P should be constant. Two is that you're selecting N selected N and we are interested in a specific R. Notice that N should be a number, not infinity. R should be a number, not infinity. So we are choosing two out of five with a fixed constant. And the fourth condition is the most important thing, is that the situation is true, false, or sick, healthy, or something like that. So. If the situation is a kind of binary, that's why it is called binomial, then we will use binomial distribution. But if the situation is not like that, so the probability is not constant, like this example, then we follow um, what we just did in the previous chapter with a lot of examples that we did, it should be very easy for you. So for example, we are choosing a team of four. I ask you, what is the chance that two are women? You know, we cannot use binomial, therefore we go to the principle. Uh, in how many different ways we can choose two people? In the denominator. So, uh, sorry, we are choosing four people, right? So we are choosing four out of seven, right? Yeah. The total number of ways that we could choose those four, those four people is four out of seven. Okay. Now we want two women. In how many different ways we can choose two women? Four, four out of uh, two out no, of two, four. two, two, two women out of four. 
female. Uh, three, yeah. Three, very good. And also we need two men. In how many different ways we can choose two men? How many men are there? Four, so two out of four. Yeah. So you see, when, when it is not the fixed probability, we cannot use the binomial distribution, but when we cannot use the binomial distribution, still we have like a standardized situation. Uh, notice that it is without replacement, because a team, when you choose a person, you cannot put there, an order does not matter because they are a team. Then we always have this structure. The, when this situation has happened, it has a name. It's called hyper geometric. Okay. And the life is very simple. If I ask you what is the chance of three women, you will say, okay, we are choosing four out of seven. Very good. I want three women out of how many women? Three. And do I need anyone else? Do I need a man? Zero. You need one. You need one. Yeah, one out of how many? Four. Four. None. We will continue with hypergeometric in our next class. Yeah, if the probability is fixed, we are choosing out of N R items and it is true, false, or success, failure kind of thing, then we will use binomial. If the probability is, this, if the probability is constant, the probability is changing from the first person to the second person, and we are selecting R out of N, but order doesn't matter, What do we use? The hyper geometric. This is just the summary of what we did last time. Now I want you to um, read a question. Automobiles frequently arrive at front exit of the Queen Elizabeth Way. At the rate of two per minute, what is the probability? Is this binomial? Uh, no. Because there's more than uh, two possible outcomes? It's like it's not oh. true or false? Uh, no, but yeah, either they, they, you know, they pass or they don't pass. Yes, you can say um, that is not the major reason. So how about we check the attributes of binomial? Because I'm asking you, is it binomial or not? How about we check them? We should have, if it is binomial, we need to have a fixed probability. Uh, what is the probability that a car will pass Two Queen Elizabeth minute. section? Two per minute. Uh, probability is a number between zero and one. One by two? So uh, it passes, either it not passes, yes. Uh, no, yes, it is true. It's either passes or not passes. So this condition is satisfied, but the chance of passing and not passing is not the same. So probability uh, is changing. Uh, does it say that it is changing? We don't know. Okay, the point is this, okay. we don't know. But what we know is that on average, two cars pass per minute, okay? So in this situation, the only thing that we know is that on average, two cars pass per minute. Do we know anything else? How many cars did they pass? Like, uh, Unfortunately, this we didn't know. Do we know the total number of cars that are passing? N. 
Y, y... Uh, no. Yeah. Do we know how many of them we want to pass? Uh, um, no. So we don't know that one too. So is it binomial? We don't know how many are passing and we don't know uh, out of those how many, how many we want. It's just something per minute. Okay, so this is, I, like, if you don't, you know, pay attention to this big difference is that in this case, the only thing that we know is the average number of cars that pass per minute, okay? Uh, so if that happens, you cannot use binomial, cannot use hypergeometric because even we don't know that varying probability. So what we can do, the only thing that we can do is to use Poisson formula. Poisson formula is, says that the chance of some specific outcome, if we know the average, the average rate of the occurrence of those outcomes, is mu to the power of x e to the power of negative mu divided by x factorial. I'm sorry, did you say mu? Yeah, mu is this mu. Is that average? Mu, mu is like a cat. Meow. Mu, right? Mu. Like, yeah, isn't that the sign of average or mean? Or something? Yeah, mu is the sign of average of the population. We use mu for the parameter of the population since the beginning of the semester, okay? So for example, if I want to know what is, you know, on average two cars per minute pass, what is the chance that in the next minute, instead of two cars, one car passes? And the only thing that I know is the average. So I would say two is the average to the power of one, which is one car per minute that I want, e to the power of negative mu divided by one factorial, okay? If I want to know what is the chance that three cars passes, you no, know, on average two car passes, but it is possible that maybe three cars will pass in the next minute. So it would be two to the power of three, e to the power of negative two divided by three factorial. Good. So now, what is E? There are some mysterious numbers um, in the world, in this universe that we live in. One is pi, okay? Do you know what is pi? One, one, seven, something, something. No, 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 pi. Pi. 3.14. Oh, three. Yeah, 3.14. By the way, it goes forever. yeah, exactly. That's the point, Utkan. Very good. The problem with pi, like the, the problem that we have as humans, is that we don't know what is pi. Pi, it, it has infinite number of decimal places. If you can find the next decimal place, there is an institute that gives you $1 million. Okay? For every new decimal point of pi. So we don't know pi, and it turns out that the area and circumference uh, of any shape that resembles a circle depends on pi. So we don't know the trajectory of planets, we don't know the area of a circle, because we don't know pi. We can only have an approximation of these things. We can only have the approximation of the uh, you know, circumference of a circle. The other thing that we will never know is E. E is Nepper's number, and uh, um, it is two point something. Can you please check uh, what is E in your calculator uh, or on internet? 
Two point seven one eight. One seven seven one eight. Two point two eight. Is that this? Yeah. yeah. Um, can you go one more decimal place, please? Two. One more. Eight. One more. One. Uh, anyway, we don't know what is e. Okay. E is another constant in this universe that we don't know. And it turns out that whatever is not relying on pi is relying on E. So uh, a lot of phenomena, uh, their equation and their formulation depends on E. And it's another number that we don't know. So this Poisson's formula depends on that unknown. The only thing we can do is to use it with some approximation. So let's say, as we usually do with pi, let's go with four decimal places, 2.7183, right? And we have to go to the power of negative, e to the power of negative two. And uh, how much is one factorial? One. Very good. So this probability is two. So first of all, uh, 2.7183 to the power of negative two. Uh, are you using Excel or you're using your calculator? Calculator. Uh, if you're using BA2 calculator, to the power of negative number is a little bit tricky because um, you have to choose that sign at the bottom row of your calculator that says change of the sign. You cannot use the subtraction addition symbol. Okay, so to, to do 2.7183, you type it and then when you want to do, go to the power, that two is, you have to choose the change of sign to change it to negative two. So probability of one, is it's 0 0.2707 okay how many of you got this please confirm it's yep. zero seven better how many of you got this yeah so let's do the other question two to the power of three two point 7183 to the power of negative 2 divided by 3 factorial. Please tell me the result. Zero point one eight zero four. Okay. So, um, on average, two cars pass per minute. The chance that one car passes is 0.27 or 27%. The chance that three car passes, you know, it is 18%. Uh, and even we can calculate what is the chance that exactly two car passes. Okay, so my question for you was that calculate the probability of two. It's 0 0.2706. 0 0.2706. Thank you. What is the probability that in the next minute, no cars will pass? Okay. We will wait for everybody to get the same result. If you need my help, let me know. Amir, I have a question. Sure. Uh, what's the factorial of zero? Is it one? Yes. Zero factorial is one. So then, Amir, for, for this one, it'd be two to the power of zero times e to the power of negative two over zero factorial. Exactly. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Notice that we have finished this chapter. 
The only thing that is left is uh, some points that you need to understand, okay? And for that, we have to go back to uh, some previous sections. Okay. If, we, if I tell you that a distribution is binomial, or you discover that this distribution is binomial, by confirming that the P is constant, there is a specific number of selections of which we want a specific number to be successful, then we know what is the mean and standard deviation of that distribution. If this happens, the mean is N, P and the standard deviation is square root of n p multiplied by one minus p. Okay. So what is the variance of binomial distribution, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, square root. Square of the standard deviation. Yeah. What is it? It's np into 1 minus p. Exactly. Very good. If the standard deviation is the square root of np minus 1 minus p, then the variance would be n multiplied by p multiplied by 1 minus p itself. So what is the mean of... So that was for binomial. And this is... Let me write it down. If the only thing that we know is mu, then it is... Poisson, okay? Now, what is the mean of the Poisson distribution? What is the formula for the mean of a Poisson distribution? This is a tricky question. If it's a Poisson distribution, we know the mean. Given already? Yes. So the only thing that I have to tell you is what is the standard deviation? Standard deviation of a Poisson distribution is square root of that mean. Find chart 5.3. Okay. Now, there are the shape of the frequent uh, probability distribution of binomial distributions with different constant P's and ends. So, for example, the first one, the p is 0 0.05, and the constant probability of something happening. The number of trials is n equal to 10, and the chance that zero successes will happen is 60%. Okay? So, let me ask you. What is the probability in the first chart, in chart 5.3, it has five charts. What is the chance that one success will happen? The, the, the constant chance is 0 0.05. We are trying 10 times. What is the chance that one of those 10 times we will succeed? Um, point three. Yeah, um, very good. Point three something. Very good. Okay. Now I uh, want. Sorry. Go ahead. How did you find it? Uh, we are looking at chart 5.3. Yeah, yeah. And the first one? Uh, the, yeah, the first chart. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what is the chance of one success. On x-axis, we have zero success, one success, two success. And one of those columns is one success. Uh, you don't see it? Uh, I see the chart, but I don't see what. Okay, uh, what is the longest column? It's point six zero. No, but that column is for what x? Zero. 
Yeah, so the chance of zero success is 60%. Oh, okay, okay. What is the chance of two success? Uh, it's of two success, it's um, almost uh, 0 0.08. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, now these are binomial distributions because we have fixed P. I want you to write down the mean of each one of these binomial distributions at the top. What is the mean of the first distribution? What is the mean of the second distribution? Notice that in all of them, we are trying 10 times and the chance of different number of successes is shown to us. But I want you to write the, the average. What is the expected uh, number of successes or the average number of successes? Do you know what is the formula for the mean of binomial distribution? N into P? Yes. It is at 0 0.5. The first one is 0 0.5. The second one, and I want you to write those down. I will randomly ask you the answers. Uh, what is the mean of the second distribution? One, very good. Um, Raymond, what is the mean of the third distribution? Two. Very good. Um, yeah. What is the mean of the fourth distribution? Five. Very good. Yep. What is the mean of the fifth distribution? Seven. Very good. Yep. Is the first distribution beautiful? Um, yes. No, it is ugly because it is not symmetric. Is the second distribution beautiful? Yes. No, because it is not symmetric. Is the third distribution beautiful? No, it's not symmetric. It's not symmetric. Very good. Is the fourth distribution beautiful? Yeah, it is symmetric. Yeah. So... Uh, the lesson that you learn here, notice that in this um, uh, set of probability distribution, the N or the number of trials is the same. P is changing, therefore mean is changing. And when the mean of a binomial distribution reaches to five, it becomes beautiful and symmetric. Five or more than five, it becomes beautiful and symmetric. In the next chapter, we know what is that. that. That shape, the symmetric shape that it will mimic is called normal distribution. And that's why what we are doing is important to realize that a binomial distribution becomes symmetric when the mean is five or more than five. When mean is more than five and n multiplied by one minus v is also more than five, then it will be completely symmetric. So now, uh, so let us continue. I want you to go to chart 5.4 and write down the mean of those four distributions, everyone. Chart 5.4 is just below that chart and we have the N is now changing. What is the P for chart 5.4? Point one. Yeah, point one. Yeah. What is the mean of the first chart in chart group five four? Zero point seven. Zero point seven. Is it beautiful? No. What is the mean of second chart in five four? Is it uh, zero point one two or is it one point two? Uh, you have to multiply 12 and 0.1 and use your calculator and answer me. Everybody else That's has done it. Oh, yeah, 1.2. Is it beautiful? No. Okay. What is the mean of the third chart? Um, two. Is it beautiful? Not really. Okay. Uh, what is the mean of the fourth chart? 
It's four. Is it beautiful? Uh, it's not symmetric, so it's so not. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bit. Okay, so now I have a question for you. We, uh, the probability of all of these phenomena are 0.1. Just the number of trials is changing. If a researcher wanted to have a symmetric shape and he knows that the phenomena constant probability is 0.1, what can he do to make the shape symmetric? Because well, for seven, it is not symmetric. For 12, it is not so symmetric. Even when he tries 40 times, it is not still symmetric. Do you have any idea what can he do to make this the shape of these probabilities symmetric. Make n fifty. Very good, n is very good. N. Exactly. If n is fifty, then mu would be five, and we know that the shape will become symmetric. Very good. Now the other thing that I want you to do is that everyone, please go to page one seventy one. It's very. Can you repeat again why it's going to be symmetric, the actual reason, or what it yeah. can do to make no, it? No, I didn't tell you the reason. I'm telling you the fact, but I didn't tell you the reason yet. In the next chapter, we will realize the reason. But I'm telling you that when the mean of a binomial distribution becomes five, uh, then the shape becomes beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and the reason, now I tell you the reason. The reason is that actually, if the mean is NP uh, is five, and N multiplied by one minus P is also five or more than five, then the binomial distribution is very similar to normal distribution. And we know that normal distribution is always symmetric. So, you know, somebody has proven that if NP and N multiplied by one minus V are both more than five, then the shape of the distribution of binomial distribution becomes normal and that's why, but uh, we don't see that proof. Now, uh, I want to finish today's class by practicing. And the most important practice thing in this chapter is to be able to identify what, what is the distribution. If you identify that this distribution is binomial, then you will use the binomial distribution. If you identify that it is Poisson, then you will use Poisson distribution. So let's look at question 53, everyone. A study reported that 7.5% of the work workforce has a drug problem. A drug enforcement official wishes to investigate this statement. In the sample of 20 employees, employed workers, how many would you expect to have a drug problem? What is the standard deviation? And what is the likelihood that none of the workers <clears throat> sampled? Okay, so let's think about this. Um, so is there a constant P? Do you see my writing on the whiteboard? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what is the constant P? Is there a constant probability of 7. a drug problem? Yes. 7.5%. Yeah. Are we selecting or 0 0.075, right? Uh, and um, is there a specific number of uh, trials that we are trying on to check if they are they have drug problems or not? Yes. What is that? 20. 20. Very good. And is there a specific number of them that we are interested in having drug problems? None of them. Yeah, so, yeah. And uh, is this like a kind of having drug problem, not having drug problem? Yes or no, yeah. Yeah, so drug or not drug. So what is the distribution that you have to use in this question? Binomial. 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 Okay. So you see, this is, you know, and then the rest is simple. The probability 
of zero success is combination of zero out of 20. What is the chance of drug? Drug uh, problem. 0 0.075. 0 0.075. How many people we want to have drug problem? Zero. Okay, what is the chance of not having drug problem? Uh, no, uh, 0.925. Yeah. And how many we want to have not drug problem? 20. That's the answer. Good. So life is easy once we determine that this is binomial. So of this question, we understand that it is binomial. And then answering it becomes easy. And the last, uh, the first question says, how many do you expect to have drug problem? Expected value. is a synonym for average, is a synonym for mean. So can you tell me on average, uh, how many people would have drug problem? Uh, mean would be N into P, so 20 into 7.5. No, 0 0.75. 0 0.75. Okay. So it should be 0.150. Uh, okay, and uh, also as part of it says, what is the standard deviation? Standard deviation, because we know it is binomial, n p 1 minus p, so it would be 20 multiplied by 0 0.075 multiplied by 0.925. So please tell me what is the under the square root first? Uh, 1.3875. And get the square root of that. 1.3875. Okay, can anyone else confirm this? Yeah, I got the same. Very good. Now, the third part of this question is problematic. Okay, what is the likelihood that at least one has a drug problem? Okay, what can we do? What is the meaning of at least one? Not zero. So this question is asking us, what is the probability of one or two or three or four or five? So basically to find that, I have to find what is the chance of one uh, not having drug, having drug problem plus the chance of two having drug problem plus the chance of three having pro drug problem and add them. Okay, if that happened to you, a question like C happened to you that says at least one, and you end up having doing 20 binomial questions, then it is better to do one minus the other. So it's okay, I will be happy if one, two, three, or four happens. So basically I will, this would be similar to one minus probability of zero. So the only thing that will make me unhappy is if zero drug problems happens. And so we already knew the probability of zero. This is the probability of zero. We calculate that and we find the probability of at least one. Now answer me, I write a new question and I want you to answer me, and that's the last question for today. What is the probability of at most eighteen? 
Prague problems. So what is the meaning of that? Do we want to know probability of one drug problem? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. How about zero drug? Do we want to know the probability of zero drug problem? Yes. Do we want to know the probability of one drug problem? Yeah. yeah we yeah. want anything up to, do we want to know the probability of 18 drug problems? Yes. Yes. So we have to do a lot of binomials, a lot, and then add them. You know, a lot of combination and p to the power of n, q to the power of. Is there any other solution? Uh, can you do the same thing, but like instead of one minus probability of zero, would it be one minus probability of nineteen twenty? Uh, one pro one minus probability of nineteen minus probability of. 20. 20. These are the two things that we don't want. If these two things do not happen, then I will be happy. So we will find these two. So it would be one minus combination of 19 out of 20, 0 0.075 to the power of 19, 0 0.925 to the power of one. Might. Yes. Combination of 20 out of 20, 0, 0.75 to the power of 20, 0, 0.925 to the power of, how hmm. many, if we want 20 drug problems, how many no problems we want? Zero. Oh. So when you are doing the suggested end of chapter questions, notice that first you have to make a decision. Is it binomial? hypergeometric or Poisson. And you will see that there are some binomial questions that the book is answering by Poisson. You are supposed to answer them by binomial. So if, if something is binomial, even if the end of chapter solution tells you that you use Poisson, I want you to use binomial. We don't want to approximate anything. Um, so, and then once you decide that it is binomial Poisson or hypergeometric, then you will use the formula. Uh, if that happened, that it is asking you at least or at most, then your work would be a little harder. Can you tell me what is the probability of zero? This one. Combination of zero out of 20 is one multiplied by 0 0.75 to the power of zero is also one. Just you have to do 0 0.925 to the power of 20, please. 0 0.2103. 0 Very good. So the answer is 0 0.2103. And the chance of at least one is one minus the probability of zero, which would be one minus 0 0.2103, which will be zero point point seven eight nine seven good 